Cardiology Group 1, and we are going to be doing our presentation on heart attacks, on the symptoms, the treatments, and much more. My name is Clarissa Marquez, and these are the rest of my teammates. Hi, my name is Mawa Oyabamiji. Hi, my name is Janolia Macaranas. Hi, my name is Talisha Pereira. Hi, my name is Janaya Jones. Hi, my name is Priscilla Vasquez. Start this presentation off, we're going to talk about what a heart attack is and why does it occur. Heart attacks are often called myocardial infractions, which is a sudden blockage in one or more coronary arteries. Coronary arteries are important in supplying the areas of the heart muscle. So once they're blocked, this will inhibit the heart's ability to properly pump blood. Often the blockage is typically caused by formation of a blood clot, which is also called a thrombus. This blockage will cause the lack of oxygen and blood flow to the heart, which will onset a myocardial infraction. Some of the most common risk factors of getting a heart attack are high cholesterol, smoking, diet, physical inactivity, alcohol consumption, and most important is the family history of a heart attack. Some others are listed here as well. And then these are the heart attack symptoms, and we wanted to highlight that they vary between men and women. Women are seen to have the symptoms that are more atypical, which is as listed, shortness of breath, dizziness, back or jaw pain, and chest pain. And then Dr. Michelle Donahue, we wanted to highlight that she said it's important that women know and act upon the signs and symptoms of a heart attack. And then the typical symptoms that are more felt by men are sweating, pressure, tightness of chest, pain or discomfort through the upper body. Changing eating habits are often tough, but having a healthy diet is a great way to prevent heart attacks. A few steps on your journey to healthy eating is limiting unhealthy fats, reducing the sodium in your food, and controlling your portion size. And staying active is an important part of a heart-healthy lifestyle. Aim for at least 30 minutes of physical activity per day for at least four days. Heart attacks are treated differently depending on the specific condition of the patient. Some of the treatment options include an angioplasty, a therectomy, a clot, clot dissolving medication, bypass surgery, and artificial heart valve surgery. So a way that you can help treat a heart attack is by giving CPR, which stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. And here is a video demonstrating how to do it. If you see a teen or adult suddenly collapse, it's important to act fast. Helping to save a life is easier than you might think. Just start hands-only CPR. The first step is to send someone to call your local emergency response number or call it yourself. Then get directly over the victim. Put the heel of one hand in the center of the chest. Then put your other hand on top of the first. Then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. It's important to push, giving 100 to 120 compressions per minute, which is about the same tempo as this song. Some of the long-term and short-term effects can greatly affect a person's quality of life. Short-term effects consist of may not wanting to insert themselves due to fear or, or pain, especially chest pain because the heart attack is located in the chest. It can develop swelling, dizziness, and other symptoms that can affect the ability to complete a daily, everyday task. Stress of knowing that they will forever have this illness and that it could result in even greater cardiac um, exertions such as stroke and another heart attack, possibly fatal. Long-term effects is considered a chronic condition, meaning long-lasting, and depends on how bad the heart attack affected that person. And of course, it's different for everybody as everybody has a different effect. These are our works cited pages and thank you so much for listening. <laughs>